In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we'd like to give you some tips for applying a time lapse effect to your video clip. We often see time lapse used when you want to give a summary of movement or change in your video. It might be someone building a skyscraper where you see a whole day or weeks worth of work in a few seconds. Or we find it sometimes in scenic shots where you see the clouds crawl across the mountain much faster than they would have in a normal shot. So we're going to look a little bit at using this technique. You may run into an issue that I did with my video camera. My camera will record a great length of video on one shot, but it will break it up into segments. On track two here, which I have turned off, I have uh, three segments totaling 38 minutes. But the way my camera stores the data is each file can be no larger than 1.9 gigabytes. So what I did was I took all three of them and produced them into one longer clip. Now you may want to do that or not, but just something to be aware of. So let's take this long clip, almost 38 minutes in length, and use the time lapse on it. If I play it in the raw mode, I'll play it right now, you see I have several cars. It's just a static shot from a tripod focusing on an intersection. And when cars come and go from one of four directions, uh, you see them on the video at normal speed. But let's see what it would look like if we apply a time lapse to this. So we'll click on the clip and click on the Tools button above the timeline. Then I'm going to choose Power Tools. The fourth option down is Video Speed. That's the one we're going to use. I'll enlarge that panel and click on Speed Adjustment. And when I do, that opens my Video Speed Designer. Now there are options you can do with a selected range in your clip. We have a different tutorial on that. But on this one, we're just going to look at how to do time lapse on the whole thing. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is when you do time lapse, and it's more than a, any insignificant amount of change in speed, the video is great, but the audio sounds horrible. So one of the things you can do, and I would often do this, is click on the gear to the lower right of my preview window, and then you can click on Keep Audio or Remove Audio. In most cases, I would actually remove the audio. Now you can keep it, and you can also do Keep Audio Pitch only from one half speed to twice the speed. That's the range where you could keep the pitch. Uh, you can also apply an interpolated technology, but when I click on the information dot, I find that this is used when we're reducing the video speed. And in this case, we won't be reducing it. So that doesn't apply in this particular case. The only thing I would basically do in this would be to remove the audio. I don't really need it. So I'm going to strip the audio out of this track. Now we have the original video length, and we can change it in one of two ways. We can determine another video length, or we could use a multiplier. And if you're going to use time lapse, you're going to go above one. So let's first of all just say we'll take the 37 minute and we'll change it to, let's say, 10. And I'll do zero on the minutes. I won't worry about the frames. And now my multiplier is 3.786. It automatically calculates that. But let's play the video and see the difference. Now the cars are flying by. There's a consistency there. Looks like they're all racing, but the shot isn't too bad. I get to see in an enhanced way, four times as fast, I get to see the movement of the vehicles at that intersection. Now let's see what happens when we take this and we go to five minutes, or we could change the multiplier. Let's change the multiplier to, let's say, seven and it automatically recalculates the video duration. So we've gone from 37 minutes to, to uh, almost five and a half minutes, and we'll play this. Uh, 
Again, you can see vehicles moving apparently normally, although very quickly. But watch what happens when we multiply it times 10. We're down to a 3 minute 47 second clip. There's a jerkiness now in the movement of the vehicles because it's cutting out so many frames. If I go up to 15 times the normal speed, in this case, there's a lot of jerkiness. It looks like the vehicles are there in one shot and then they're completely off the screen or they're off the screen and then they pop on quickly and it's hard to tell where they're going. So the footage you shoot will partly control how much you can time lapse your images without making them look real, real odd. And when you're all done, let's let's dial this back to maybe, oh, let's let's do it. I would probably not do this shot more than maybe eight or nine. Let's go eight. And then I'll click on OK at the bottom. And now I discover that my video has no audio. I can actually split the tracks and take the audio out. But when I attempt to play this now, it should be time-lapsed pretty strongly. And what was a very slow intersection becomes a very busy intersection. So given the purpose of your project and the footage that you have, you can use this effect to create a time-lapse in CyberLink PowerDirector.